Good evening, I am Councillor Lauren Townsend, Cabinet Member for Resources and Customer Experience. Please note this meeting will be recorded for broadcast on the internet after the meeting has taken place and can be viewed online at the Council's YouTube website. Generally, the public gallery is not filmed, but by entering the meeting room and using the public seating area, you are consenting to being filmed. All recordings will be undertaken in accordance with the Council's standing orders. There are three decisions to be taken this evening, one by Councillor Hernshaw, Cabinet Member for Children and Young People, one by Councillor Wilson Mark Blue, Cabinet Member of the Public Realm, and I will also be taking a decision. In addition to myself and any other councillors who have decided to join the meeting, a number of senior officers, together with legal, service based, and democratic services colleagues, are also in attendance either online or at Civic. Can I ask anyone who has joined us online to switch off their microphone and camera when not speaking, please? A supply of the papers for this meeting are available on the modern.gov pages of the Council's website. I have not received notification of any members of the public registered to speak this evening. I have not been advised in advance that any councillors have registered to speak, but for any councillors who have joined the meeting, please let me know if you wish to speak at the relevant time. Can I remind councillors that any contributions should not exceed three minutes? The decision sheet will be published on the modern.gov pages of the Council's website no later than Friday, the 5th of July 2024. I will now pass you to Councillor Hernshaw to take his fight. Thank you, Councillor Townsend. Uh, my decision today relates to enhancing our supports as a council for children and MK with uh, autism spectrum condition or ASC. Uh, so effectively, we are establishing additional ASC units in schools in Bradwell Village, Ara Common, uh, Jamanda Park and Southwood with an additional specific secondary pathway at Romans Field School. And this will help us address the increasing number of children that have uh, EHCPs in our community. Um, I think some stats are quite helpful for this. So between 2015 and 2030, uh, 2023 uh, in MK, uh, the number of children with EHCPs rose by 40% and those that have uh, ASC increased by 85% in that time frame. Um, and that trend shows no signs of slowing down. So I think it's uh, fair to say, and I think everyone can agree that it's essential uh, we expand our current facilities to full plan uh, and ensure that the needs of our children uh, are met um, with the best possible outcomes for their well-being and a sense of belonging so they don't have to seek education outside of the uh, The benefits are manifold. We improve the well-being of our children with ASC. Uh, we also reduce travel time and associated travel costs that are by ensuring that we have appropriate provision. Um, and integrated units at mainstream schools also provides a pathway for promoting inclusivity. Um, and that all of this is also value for the taxpayers' money. Um, I will say that I think expanding units within existing schools is only a partial solution. We will need to continue to add further local specialist provisions across Northern and Keynes to meet future projected demand for our local children. Um, and we will continue to explore our options and how best to deliver this, including exploring any future opportunities to bid for new special schools as and when released by the Department of Education. But it should be said, I think, that we have consistently pursued bids for new special schools and unfortunately wasn't prioritised by the Department of Education, which I believe is ultimately due to a lack of central government funding in this area, something that I know that a Labour government would ensure. Nonetheless, I still think that this proposal is a strategic and necessary step to ensure the best possible outcome for children with this in the city. Uh, it's a testament to this council's commitment to inclusivity, community, and fiscal responsibility. So I don't believe there's anything else um, really to add, and I don't think there's any councillors that are registered to speak, as Councillor Townsend said. So, uh, Don and Dick, does anything you'd like to add to that? No, thank you, Councillor Henshaw. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Henshaw. Great, well, I'm happy taking this decision. Thank you very much. Okay, item two on the agenda then is the quarter four draft out term report. This is my decision. So this, uh, we're taking it a little bit later in the year than we usually would. This would normally go to cabinet in June, but due to the announcement of the general election, it's been pushed back to delegated decision at the beginning of July. Um, in general, um, I guess on the surface of it, it's a, it's a positive report. Uh, Revenue accounts all ended in surplus. Um, General Fund in particular uh, has a provisional outturn underspend of uh, £440,000. Um, but this does not mean there's not more uncertainty moving forward, and it kind of masks the challenges that we are seeing 
particularly in children's social care, where there is currently a four million overspend. This is predominantly to do with pressures um, from an increase in looked after children across the city, uh, but also looked after children who are older with more complex needs, who need more sophisticated support. So that's one to watch moving forward, I think, in terms of the challenge for the council. Um, other than that, everything's in the report. Um, if you wanted to look at the underspend, that's item 2.5 in the papers. Um, and that's pretty much it for this one. Does any officer in the room have any comments or wish to make any addition? No, shaking heads, that's always good. There's no members of the public registered to speak. There are no councillors online or in the room. No, in that case, then I will um, take this decision as noted and I will pass you to Councillor Lawson Martin for a much more exciting item. <laughs> Thank you very much, Councillor Cantor. Um, I am here to take a decision on the purchase of a snazzy new hole filling machine. Uh, the reason for doing this is to be able to fix more pop holes better, quicker, and more sustainably, which is what we all want to see. This is tested technology. The Elastomac is something that we have used in Milton Keynes. It's something that we've seen works, and crucially, when we are fixing potholes, we need those pothole repairs to last. And that needs to go hand in hand with a wider programme of resurfacing where that's what's required with our roads. So I'm really pleased to take this decision. Andrew Stewart, do you have anything that you'd like to add? I just wanted to add that this technology has been um, tested more widely across the UK and this. A lot of authorities are are investing not just in one machine, but in multiple machines. And it's something that if we, you know, I'm sure it will be successful, but going forward, we, we look forward to maybe adopt this process wider and save even more carbon and make a, a more sustainable service um, as part of our new contract in, in this way. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Andy. Um, I don't believe we have any members of the public registered to speak. I see no councillors, therefore, I think we can take the decision. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Rosa Marshall. That's the end of the meeting for this evening. So the meeting is closed at seven minutes past six. <laughs>